The trial and execution of Anne Boleyn is one of the most high-profile events in the history of England. The trial took place on May 15, 1536, in Isping, near the Tower of London. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII of England, was arrested on May 2, 1536, on charges of treason and betrayal of the crown. She was accused of having affairs with several men, including her brother George Boleyn. The trial began with a formality. English lawyer Thomas Cromer was appointed as in Boleyn's lawyer. However, the panel of judges, including Henry VIII's father, Thomas Borman, was already biased against the case. Anne Boleyn was found guilty, and the court decision on this was completely predetermined. She was sentenced to death, but the sentence was reduced to death on a wheel, for which she should have died from a slow and extremely painful method of execution. However, King Henry VIII, wanting to end this process as soon as possible and marry his next wife, Jane Seymour, changed the method of execution. Having escaped with only one second of suffering, Anne Boleyn was executed on May 19, 1536, on a tower near the tower. Her body was buried in an unmarked grave on the grounds of the tower church. Anne Boleyn became the first queen in the history of England to be executed by a court. Her trial and execution followed the annulment of her marriage to Henry VIII, which became one of the key points of the reformation of the church in England. Queen Anne Boleyn of England has a miscarriage. The king and queen were very much looking forward to the birth of this baby, and Anna's pregnancy was announced to the whole kingdom. Henry VIII is deeply disappointed by what happened. He believes that God is punishing him, in this way for divorcing his first wife and marrying Boleyn contrary to the law and the prohibition of the Pope. He begins to think that God will not give him sons from this woman, and about how to get rid of Anna, he wants to marry again. Anne Boleyn's most ardent opponent at court was Thomas Cromwell, Henry's chief and most influential advisor. The king instructs this man, who hated Anna with all his heart, to collect charges against her. Anne Boleyn. On May 2, 1536, King Henry VIII sends a messenger from Surmai's palace with a message for his second wife, Queen Anne Boleyn, who stays most of her days in the Placentia Palace, has not survived to the present day. The letter says that Anna must appear before the Privy Council, the main advisory body of the kingdom. Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn Anna appears in the meeting room, where three men are waiting for her. One of them is her uncle, the Duke of Norfolk. The members of the council accuse the Queen of adultery with Sir Henry Norris I, of the King's closest friends, as well as with the court musician Mark Smeaton and her brother George Boleyn. Anna is shocked by what is happening. She is interrogated and then escorted to her chambers in front of the entire court. No English queen has ever been subjected to such humiliation before. Reconstruction of the appearance of an Bolinth queen tries her best to pretend that nothing is happening. After changing into a luxurious outfit of red velvet and gold, she goes down to dinner. And Bolin does not receive a message from the king wishing her a pleasant appetite. As has always happened, her ladies-in-waiting are nervous, someone is crying. Someone is very tense. Then the members of the Privy Council come to Anna with a statement that from now on she should be imprisoned in the tower. If it is His Majesty's wish, I am ready to obey. Anna answers with her head held high. She is not given time to pack and is not allowed to say goodbye to her daughter Elizabeth. Thomas Cromwell is in a hurry to bring this matter to an end as soon as possible because he is familiar with the changeable disposition of the king, who at any moment may change his mind about getting rid of Anna. How many times have the couple violently quarreled and then passionately reconciled? The king, meanwhile, does not show a worried look at all he, as usual, is having fun. Invites the ladies of the court to his chambers. Anne Boleyn arrives at the Tower Beat the evening of that day. All of London already knows about the arrest of the queen. Upon entering the territory of the terrifying tower, Anna loses her composure and falls to her knees, swearing her innocence. The Commandant of the Tower leads Boleyn to the Royal Chambers. Anna is assigned for ladies-in-waiting, whom she did not trust and whom she did not let close to her before. One of them is her aunt. The task of these ladies is to report to Cromwell about Anna's every move. The Queen begins to have hysterical seizures. The Commandant watches as she desperately sobs, then abruptly begins to laugh loudly. On Boleyn in captivity, a shot from the film, another of the Boleyn family in 2008. In fact, Un was placed in a luxurious royal suite, and not a dungeon like the rest of the prison nurse me in while. George Boleyn is also arrested on incest charges. The other two men, who are accused of having intimate relations with the Queen, are also being detained. 
Towards nightfall, Cromwell sends the king a letter outlining the accusations against the queen. According to eyewitnesses, Henry VIII burst into tears when reading this document. Anna writes a letter to her husband asking him to make her trial fair. On May 15, 1536, the trial of Anne Boleyn begins. All the most important persons of the state are present in the courtroom, only to thousands spectators. The judge was appointed by Cromwell himself. The chairman of the court is Anne's uncle, the Duke of Norfolk. The queen's fate is decided by 15 peers, including her father. The king is not present at the trial. Henry is already preparing for the wedding. He has chosen a new wife, lady-in-waiting Jane Seymour. At the court hearing, Anna behaves confidently. She is collected, actively defends herself, disputes all charges, and behaves with dignity. Anna finds out that now she is already accused of cheating with four men. The prosecutor claims that throughout her marriage to the king, and Boleyn daily indulged in vices and debauchery, inclined people loyal to the monarch to adultery, lured them into her love networks. There were also accusations of witchcraft, as well as mockery of the king. George Boleyn's wife testifies against him. Three men who were accused of having relations with the queen denied their involvement. But the musician Smeaton admitted guilt under prolonged torture. Torture was not used against aristocrats. So it is not surprising that the rest did not admit guilt. To finish off Anna, Cromwell makes the most serious accusation, conspiracy to murder the king. All the evidence looks extremely inconclusive, based only on rumors, speculation, misinterpretation of the queen's words, or obtained under torture. All the prosecution witnesses are Anna's personal enemies, people who hated her and wanted to get even with her. Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn shot from the TV series The Tudors 2007 to 2010, the verdict of men accused of adultery with the queen is discouraging, public hanging, evisceration, quartering, genitals to be cut off and burned. Finally, the peers announce their unanimous decision. Anne Boleyn is guilty of high treason. Anna is amazed. Even her own father voted for a guilty verdict. Anna is immediately stripped of all titles. Her uncle reads out her death sentence by burning at the stake or beheading, if the king so wills. Until the last moment, the woman was absolutely sure that the court would acquit her. Because the entire trial was grossly flawed, the evidence was fabricated. Her rights were grossly violated. Besides, such a high-profile and complex case was considered in just one day. On May 16, 1536, Cromwell persuades the Archbishop of Canterbury to annul the marriage of the king and queen. The consequence of this decision is that the daughter of Anne and Henry is recognized as illegitimate and therefore has no rights to the throne. On May 17, 1536, the execution of men recognized as her lovers, including George Boleyn, takes place under Anna's windows. Hanging was replaced by beheading. On May 19, 1536, the next day comes when the queen is to be executed. The execution has already been canceled twice. There are only a few hours left before the execution, but Anna seems unperturbed. She is joking, laughing. The lady still believes that her husband will intervene and cancel the bloodshed, because quite recently there was such a strong love between them. Cromwell also fears that Henry may change his mind, so he tries to carry out the execution as soon as possible. The chaplain performs the rite of the last communion of the queen once again. The ladies in waiting help and Boleyn to dress for the execution. The queen carefully chose the last dress and all other accessories for herself, a modest dark dress in the English style. The king signed a decree detailing the execution of his wife in advance. He ordered that Anna's head be cut off in French, that is, with a sword, not an axe, in English, since the sword cuts off the head instantly, while a not-so-sharp axe often cannot cope with the task the first time. The king sent for an experienced executioner in France. When Anna was informed about this act of mercy by her husband, she laughed and said, it will be a very easy death because I have a very thin neck. The executioner could not have reached London so quickly, so historians believe that he was summoned even before Anna's trial, which is indisputable proof that the verdict of the meeting was a foregone conclusion. No matter what Boleyn said or did, no matter what evidence of her innocence was presented to the peers, nothing could change the fate of the queen. Anna, fully prepared, is sitting waiting for her own execution. A huge procession accompanies her to the days. Ironically, just three years ago, her coronation took place at the same place. Hundreds of people gathered to watch the fall of the queen. Anna looks around in the hope of seeing a messenger with news from the king about the commutation of the death sentence to another punishment that will save her life. 
After climbing the scaffold, Anna calms her sobbing ladies in waiting. The executioner is already standing next to the woman. There is no sword. It was specially hidden in the straw so as not to frighten the queen. Unbolin asks permission to speak to the people with the last word. With a smile and a friendly face, the queen addresses people with a heartfelt speech, wishes the king health and prayer, and declares her innocence. Meanwhile, the executioner standing behind Anna is preparing for execution. He takes off his shoes so that she does not hear his approach. Anna takes off her headdress. The maid of honor gives her a white cap. The queen puts her hair under it. The executioner kneels in front of Anna, asks for forgiveness, and tells the former queen to sit down. 9 o'clock a.m. Anna's eyes are blindfolded. She's praying again. The executioner signals the assistant to distract her. At that moment, he cuts off Anne Boleyn's head with one blow. One of the ladies in waiting carefully puts her head in a bag. The others carry her body away. A volley is heard in London announcing the death of the queen. Anna's body is put in an old arrow box. It is still a mystery why a coffin was not made for the queen. Anne Boleyn was buried in the chapel of St. Peter in Chains.